Stay connected. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. So Mike, what is your position with today's event? So I am the program coordinator for the Court and LGBTQ Center. Mm -hmm. um, I've been there for just over a year now, um, and I have spearheaded and helped put together this whole event along with my coworkers and a handful of community volunteers and helpers. Okay. So with this being the inaugural event, uh, what has your experience been like so far? It's been very good. It was definitely an uh, exercise in uh, planning. Um, definitely already have some notes that I can do better on next year. Um, but this is definitely also the building blocks year of like what worked, what didn't work, what do we need to change. Um, so I'm having a great time. <laughs> okay. um, what pushed you to want to do an event? Um, so we were originally we were actually going to plan one last year. But mm. um, like I said, I've only been at this job for just over a year. So when I started, it was just my one coworker. And it was just a little too much for one person to put on. So we shifted gears to um, a smaller, basically pride picnic. Mm. It was much smaller over at uh, Suggett Park. And we wanted to throw on a full Cortland Pride to one, get the Cortland LGBTQ community together. Um, they are, you know, there's a lot of us here, um, but it's hard to find a sense of community when there aren't events like this. Um, that way you can come meet your neighbor and see, you know, who's involved. Okay. And, um, let me ask you this. So I know you said you did the picnic and this is the inaugural one. Mm -hmm. Um, what other, uh, what other information or services like can you tell the community about? Yeah, so for the center, we offer um, com um, cultural compliance trainings for our local organizations. Those are free. Um, if anyone's interested, they can shoot me or my coworker Regina an email. Um, all of that is on our socials. Um, we offer you know a safe space for people to come and just be themselves and relax. Um, I also personally do one-on-one -on -one meetings by appointment, where it's it's not clinical, it's not therapy, but just if you need a space to come and talk to someone who's you know I've been out since middle school. Um, if you're looking for resources, I can see what I can find on my end and send it your way. Um, and then we also have connections. You know, we are a division of Family Children's Counseling Services. So, you know, we have access to certain resources right in house. Okay. What would you, how do you think the, the community has received it? Uh, overall, it has been incredibly well received. Um, our social media posts have gotten so many likes and good comments. There is a small vocal minority, as you can tell from the protesters, but that is to be expected, especially for a smaller town like this, where they're, uh, you know, you know, we're kind of, we're kind of shaking the boat. Um, but there's always pushback when there's progress. So I see it as a good sign and means we're doing something right. Okay. Do you have any message for someone who m might uh, be inquisitive or, or curious on, on your events and your services and things like that? Um, if you have any questions, if you are coming to me with a curious mind, if you are, you know, in good faith, I will gladly have a conversation with anyone. Um, I'm very, you know, in the know about what the community is looking, f you know, what the community's needs are on a bigger scale beyond, you know, beyond Portland, um, as well as here in Portland. Um, but it's just, you know, having that first step of like, are you coming at me with good faith? I, you know, I will gladly answer any question you have, but I need to know that you are respecting me in my time. Okay. And then, uh, la last but not least, um, actually I'll have two more. Here's one of them. So you said a moment, a moment ago, you know, there is a small minority that do protest. What would you, if, if, if you were able to get the protesters to hear you, what is the message you would say to them? I would say that we are just trying to live our life. You know, um, they, they use a lot of tactics that try to fear monger, um, or scapegoat other people. We just want to be ourselves freely. Um, we want the same rights that you have. Um, and we are not here to take anyone's, you know, piece of the pie. You know, rights and, you know, civil liberties are not pie. Just because I have, and, and just because I'm asking for more, does that mean I'm taking away from you? Okay. And then uh, last but not least, is there any closing message that you would like to give to the community? Um, I just want to say, you know, come enjoy the event. Come enjoy Pride. Like I said, this is the first of hopefully many. Um, and just, you know, wave your rainbow flag with Pride. What were your thoughts of today's event? I So today was our first time partnering with um, the LGBTQ Center during their Pride Festival. We had four workshops here at the library. Mm -hmm. um, got a great turnout for at least two of them. So I think it being the first year, you know, I'm hoping to see more next time. 
Um, but it was great to see all of the positivity across the street um, and just, yeah, I'm going to leave it at that. <laughs> okay. Um, what are your thoughts on, um, so what was, so what was the library's like involvement? Sure. So we um, worked with the center to, again, put on these four workshops um, during the day today so that people could, you know, go across the street, come over here. Um, there was one about self-care while being disabled and queer. Mm -hmm. And we're having the last one right now, which is um, Isabel Sterling, The Path to Publication. Mm -hmm. And she talks about um, her queer YA books that she's released. Do you feel through this partnership and this event that uh, there's new things that might be offered by the library in the future? Like any ideas or is it to be uh, announced soon or like um, any future things? Any any ideas like maybe you saw from their planning or something like that and they might say, huh, we should try that here. Or I mean, so I didn't get the chance to like go over and walk around and see what everybody had. But we're always open to new things and they're definitely one of our close partners so um if there's anything that comes out of this then i would i would be open to it but there's nothing at the moment we're just kind of okay yeah and any closing thoughts or maybe a message to the community that like you know obviously some support some don't is there any message whether representing you representing the library or anything that you might say on why you felt it was big for the library to support i mean i just want to say like I appreciate everybody that has kept an open mind. So anybody that's come in that has maybe not necessarily been supportive at the first. Mm -hmm. um, and I would hope that, you know, everybody would remember that we're here to serve this community. And mm -hmm. so um, we're doing that in the best way that we can. And I just hope that, you know, people continue to, to just try to be as inclusive as, as they can going forward. <laughs> Whatever name you want to go by, and I will respect that for what it is. All right. <laughs> so give us a quick second. The stage. We are going to get set for our first performance. shameful desires. Even women turn against the natural way of having sex and instead indulge in sex with each other. And men, instead of having normal sexual relationships with women, burn with lust for other for other men. Men did shameful things with other men as a result and suffered within themselves the penalty they so richly deserve. Those penalties Okay, Sydney, uh, what are you doing here today at the park? I am letting people know that I'm opposed to the drag show, that it needs to be back in their bars and not here in our parks. And our children are important and they don't need to be exposed to this. What brings you out to Crowell's Park today? I'm here to oppose an all-ages drag show. Drag has always been an adult sexual form of entertainment. Even drag queens say that. 
um, when I worked as an LGBTQ educator 10 years ago, we did drag events, but they were always marketed towards adults. They were never marketed towards children. I would have never approved of a drag show being marketed to children. I don't think, and I know that some of the other people I worked with would not have approved of that either. So I'm here to stand up against that. What is your involvement here though? Like, uh, how did you hear about today? I became aware of today because community members were posting about it online and showing that they were concerned about it. I've been speaking out about this issue on a national and international level for the past few years. So people in the community are aware of my advocacy work. When they found out that this was happening, I was getting lots of phone calls and messages from people. And a lot of people want to be here to say that they don't approve of this, but people that have businesses are concerned um, that you know they'll receive retaliation for standing up against it and I've gotten lots of donations from local community businesses. So are you a nonprofit? No. The donations don't go to me personally. The donations went to our signage and the signs that all the other people were holding. Gotcha. Not so, to so me. So these are these are who printed these? These were donated. Okay. Um, my all the all the signs were donated through community members okay. who wanted to be here, but felt that their businesses may become jeopardized. Okay, so historically, so in the past, you did work in the LGBTQ field. Yes. What made you want to leave that field? Well, there's an issue with this term gender identity okay. that conflicts with the sex-based rights of women and girls. And gender identity is not based in biological and material reality. It's subjective. It's about feelings. And when gender identity is inserted into the law, what it actually does is directly conflict with and undermine the sex-based rights of women and girls. So that's happening not just in America, not just in the West, but all around the world in 191 different countries are all in, um, inserting the term gender identity into laws and policies. And it's happening in schools and medical settings. And that's, and that's why you left the LGBTQ field? Well, to be more specific, it's because I realized that there are safeguarding failures inherent in all of this. An adult male friend of mine, a male who identified as female, he was grooming children on the internet and was caught in the act meeting up with a young boy that he groomed. Um, he framed it as a transphobic hate crime. That's not what happened at all. The charges are public. Um, and I was asked by my friends to support this man and raise money for this man and to um, try to move him from a female holding facility, or I'm sorry, from a male holding facility to a female holding facility. So an adult male friend of mine used this situation, used this, um, how should I, how should I word it? An adult male friend of mine identified as a woman and used that to groom children. And it was supported by my own friends and, and community at the time. So let me ask you, um, so, and because of that, that's what made you leave the field. That's what made me realize that this is very dangerous to children to say that any man can identify as a woman on the basis of his own feelings and his own self-reporting, because that's what it's what's, what's happening under the law. It's not that it's not that someone approves that you're a woman. You yourself, any man, could access women's spaces and claim womanhood and and be able to be in those spaces. And that goes for our bathrooms, our locker rooms, our change rooms. And there are violent crimes happening to women and girls in women's spaces, and it's going underreported. Now, let me ask you this. Now, you said your example was man to woman. What do you feel about someone that goes from woman to man or somebody that doesn't identify as any of it? Like, does it change? Is it more harsh? Is it less? What do you so, speak on that? This is actually um, a very good question because... The main demographic of people who are adopting transgender identities are young females. Young females who are experiencing discomfort in their bodies, 
who have a predisposition to depression, to suicidal ideation, to self-harm. These women are being preyed on and targeted and told if they don't conform to sexist stereotypes about what it means to be a woman, that they might actually be a male and they should pursue medicalization of their otherwise healthy bodies. So gender non-conforming, lesbian and bisexual females, young ones, are the biggest target of this. Uh, there's a lot of money in medicalizing children and adults, but especially children's healthy bodies. So let me ask you this. Are, do you have like a doctor degree, master's degree, or something like that in this field, or any certifications? Well, I was certified to work at the LGBTQ Center. I was a mandated reporter to the state. Um, I have no more qualifications than the people who currently work there. If the people who attended here listen to you, or if the person who put it on listened to you, what mm -hmm. message would you say to them if it was like a short message? Um, that I'm here um, motivated out of my love, care, and concern for LGB and gender non-conforming youth and also for women and girls on our sex-based rights. Um, I am not here out of any type of hatred. In fact, it's the opposite. And I wish that people would open themselves to having a conversation because they've been led to believe things that, I, that are not true. And we need to be able to have conversations about this because it affects all of us and affects the entire community and affects all future generations. So we need to be responsible adults and have productive conversations about this, not encourage silencing of people's voices. What were your thoughts of today's event? Yeah, today was great. It's always fun to give back to the community, to celebrate Pride, um, and it was a lovely event here getting to talk about um, a, a local author and what that's been like for me and talk to, um, I think some of them are the next generation of writers, which can be really cool. Gotcha. Now, you've been a big activist in the LGBTQ mm -hmm. uh, area for years, mm -hmm. um, especially locally. Originally, did you help? Did you play any role in today's event or anything like that? You know, I didn't. I was very excited to see it all happening. Um, mm -hmm. I have had to take a little bit of a step back. I've got a three-year-old and, oh boy, uh, three-year-olds are busy, busy, busy. Um, but it's so great to see an event with such a great turnout um, for our community, especially after all the break with, with COVID that we had. So you were the closing act. You were, if it was <laughs> baseball, you were batting cleanup. <laughs> How happy are you that you were able to play a role in today's event, you know, as, you know, they trusted you as the one to take it home with your workshop? What were your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, it was, it's such a pleasure. Um, I always look forward to whenever I can collaborate with the Cortland LGBTQ Center. Um, you know, they're a great organization and uh, I miss, I miss, um, I used to work there. And so I, um, they always have my heart whenever they're doing anything. So I'm always happy to help. You mentioned before we started rolling, you're with C4. What is C4? C4 is Cortland County Community of Color. We actually hold events uh, year round, like socials and Juneteenth were very popular for. So I wanted to connect with this group um, because we have a lot of the same values. Okay. What were your thoughts of today's event? It was amazing. I learned today that it was the first time putting it on and it seemed like they've been putting this on for years. Okay. Uh, any, any thoughts on like uh, how maybe C4 might want to be involved in the future or something like that, or? Absolutely, we'd love to be a part of this, our group. We'd love to hold a stand here and a table to show our support, as well as have them come to our events to show we support them as well. Thank you. Thank you. Stay connected. Make sure you hit the subscribe button.